Alrighty, so daily market analysis. We're here today talking about what has happened. The Aussie dollar CPI, well, Aussie with their CPI, the BOJ with its rate decision. We'll look into what could come up with the US dollar and the FOMC rates decision later tonight, early tomorrow morning. Um, if you're new to the session, do drop a message and say hi. Let me know where you're joining us from. And for all the regulars, I see all the names there a big welcome back thank you again for joining me on the daily market analysis you can help me out massively by remembering to click on that like and subscribe button and leaving a comment if you're watching this after um, as a recorded video and uh, if you have any questions at any point in time please feel free put it into the chat and let me know all right Quick disclaimer, any information contained on this webinar should not be construed as advice and is presented as educational material only. The contents of this webinar are not intended to be a recommendation to trade a financial product, so please remember their objectives. Financial situation and needs has not been considered and should consider its appropriateness to your circumstances. <coughs> now, take that away. Take that away. Okay, good. Now that's gone. Um, looking at what we had. Hey, Richard, how are you doing? So looking at what we had from yesterday, we had at 10 p.m. the U.S. consumer confidence number back above that 100 level, didn't do too much. JLTS jobs openings for the U.S. went from, it was 8.14 mil, revised up to 8.23, and it came out at 8.18, so better than expected, slightly less than previous. What we did see on the dollar, yesterday zoom in a bit all right okay so what we did see on the dollar yesterday this was where we were right there right this was our during our analysis yesterday it came down it tested this 104.55 level which we said it needed to stay above it bounced right back up to test that resistance right we said to trade higher to retest the resistance of 104.85 it came up to as high as 104.80 so in that area of the resistance tested uh, like I said likely to test and push back down it tested and came right back down back into <laughs> annoyingly annoyingly back into this range between 10420 and 10455 right so it's back within the range again um, the news from last night at 10 let me put that right there Right, we saw that test reject. It did try to push up a little bit with a slightly good news in terms of JLTS jobs openings, but then pushed up and then it started pushing back down. I think it was a little bit of a front running, a little bit of anticipation for what could come today. Right, so what I mean by what could come today, not just what could come this morning or this afternoon, but today, as in the US. Fed funds rate that we're going to have at 2 a.m. on the 1st of August or 31st of July for everyone on the other side of the world. Okay, but <coughs> before that, before that, we had we had good trades, we had good setups, we had good trades through the day because at 9:30 a.m. this morning. 9.30 a.m. GMT plus 8 this morning, we had the Aussie CPI. The Aussie CPI year on year, it was a 4%. Remember I was talking about this, uh, what's wrong with the audio? Anyone has any problem with audio? Audio good? just check okay let me know if there's any audio issues um, but yeah so the Aussie CPI year on year was 4% <coughs> was expected 3.8 it got released at 3.8 very string machine sound strong machine sound yeah it's probably um, me yelling into the mic a little bit too much and probably my voice going a bit off as well so it's a com it's a combination it's a com good combination of me yelling into the mic and um, and um, 
um, oh, and the buzzing sound is probably my fridge going off. <coughs> It's a working office, <laughs> right? Um, bear with me for that. A, um, let me see what can I do. Bring it back down a bit. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps a little bit better. Um, what was I going to say? Aussie, Aussie CPI. Aussie CPI was a 4%, expected 3.8, got released at a 3.8, which is a good thing for the Aussie dollar, because, well, for the Aussies, the people in Australia, because as inflation growth slows down, or showing some signs of a slowdown from 4 to 3.8 then we're going to um, release the pressure on the RBA to hike rates further right release the pressure on RBA to hike rates further with no or less likelihood no to less likelihood for the RBA to hike rates what we saw as a result of this 3.8 was that the Aussie dollar shot right down right so it was at at nine o'clock it was at six 6536 within the release of that news it shot right down to 6482 I was a little bit naughty here I did get in before the news release on the close of the hour at 9 o'clock I thought let's try if it's 4 they're expecting 3.8 got into that trade early I did a 15 to a 40 to the downside within seconds, within seconds, even before I saw that 3.8, the Aussie dollars went straight down, hit my take profit and I was out. Right, I was out of 40 pips on that for the Aussie dollar. So that was the CPI data that pushed the Aussie dollar down. The next thing I was looking at, so that's the news we had here. Right. The next thing I'm, I was was looking at or I am still looking at is for the Aussie dollar to react to this support level here at 6466 or 6465 to see what would happen at this support whether it could bounce back up or break through it came close I've been telling everyone on the live stream to watch out for this support um, it looks like it might come back down still to test this we're looking for that <coughs> but that was as much as that led to a good 40 pips to the downside and a little bit more for some other people. Um, that was not the main highlight for the morning. That was not the main highlight for the morning. The main highlight for the morning was at, it was tentative at 11.57. The BOJ, the Bank of Japan, decided to take interest rates for Japan from a 0.1 up to a 0.25%. So a rate hike decision from the Bank of Japan. And not just that, they also um, decided to, where was it? <coughs> There we go. To taper, they also decided to taper their, there we go, reduce the planned amount of its monthly purchase of JGBs, Japanese government bonds, so that it will be about 3 trillion yen in March to, in January to March 2026. The amount will be cut down by about 4 billion yen each calendar quarter in principle. All right, so a tapering, a tapering for its bond buying policy or plans and also a rate hike decision from the BOJ. Typically, typically that should have led to a massive strengthening of the yen. What happened was it sat around <coughs> before the news it pushed up. I'll zoom in a bit before the news it pushed up. It sat around on release of the news, it spiked right down. I did have an order here at about 151.70. All right, I had a about a 50 pip stop. I was 
was going for that. So I had a sell stop at that point, which shot down, triggered my sell, shot right back up and hit my stop loss. Didn't pay out this time around, so Aussie dollar got in before the news, paid out very nicely. Yen tried to take a order, a sales order there, sweat down, spiked, got whipsaw, and got taken out. Immediately as I saw that, I was casting my mind back to what happened in March, where the BOJ hiked rates, but yet we saw the Yen push to the upside. Right, this was in um, March, March, take that away. March 19th, let me find it. Where are we? Okay, March 19th, there. <coughs> So that's what happened here when they, when the BOJ last hiked rates. For the first time in 17 years, we saw the yen push down and then spike right up after that. So I thought, great, fine, I got hit on a stop. My stop got hit as it triggered and pushed back up. I got into the sell, I got into the buy following that, expecting this to push all the way up. So I got in. A buy, it went up, and then this was on the 15 minute time frame. It went outside the Bollinger Band, closed that trade, right? Straight away, I closed that trade, covered the loss plus a little bit on the US yen. So, overall, net still slightly profitable on the yen. So, that was what happened with my trades from uh, this morning. Okay. If you had any trades, do put it into the chat and let me know. <coughs> so now, with the enough about what I did, with what happened in the market or what was released in the markets, BOJ high rates, BOJ tapering its bond buying or bond purchase policy, all right, quite significantly. Should have seen the yen strengthen, didn't, it shot, it came down and shot right back up. Right now, it is coming back down. It's still sitting along this 152 level. Right, and if I'm gonna do, and if you haven't already realized, I've been talking about this 152 level a lot. I've been saying, watch out for 152. It's at that level where it could form a double bottom, if a double bottom, and then could bounce right back up, or it could just sit there and break through. Okay, so. If you haven't already, I'll put this up. I'll show you this. There you go. All right, so I did a video. This was yesterday. 21 hours ago, I did that video to talk about what the BOJ could do on the yen. If you haven't already, do make sure you go check that out because I highlight again even more about why 152 is crucial. Now with the yen at, again at that 152 level, I'm still looking for that potential of it breaking and heading to that big move to the downside. I do think that it's a big move to the downside. To find out why, check out that video. The link is in there. <coughs> okay, thanks for that, Maron. Sell position, an amazing video. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, if you do get into a trade from that video, or if you get any inspiration from that video, do leave me a comment. I would love to find out, love to know that it's helping you guys. So that's, I'll tell you more about the yen shortly, but that's what happened with the BOJ. Press conference was rather uneventful, didn't do too much. Later on tonight at 5 p.m., we do have the CPI for the Eurozone CPI flash estimate year on year, 2.5%, expected to stay at 2.5. Not expecting any big surprises there, but at 8.15 p.m., so you see how, how how busy this day is going to be, right? At 8.15 p.m., we do have the U.S. ADP non-farm employment change. 150, expected 147. I don't think it's 
whatever the number is, whatever the number is, I don't think it's going to move markets too much because later on tonight, we do have the Fed funds rate going to hold at 5.5%, but a lot of the focus, a lot of the comments and talk is going to be about what or planning or speculating about the decision in September. Right, July, well, 31st of July decision is pretty much settled, done and dusted. The big question is what's going to happen in September. At this point, it is almost, well, not almost, it is now rated as a 100% likelihood that they're going to cut rates in September, on September 18th. The question is how much they're going to cut by, right? Um, July, we're at a slight 4.1% chance for a rate cut. I don't, fact, I don't think it's going to happen. Kind of a lot of surprise, but I don't think it's going to happen. More likely, we're going to see that 95.9% chance of it keeping on hold. So that's going to happen. Fed funds rate, we're going to see a lot of comments about, yes, you've kept it on hold this time in September. Are you going to, well, you're going to cut, you're most likely going to cut. How confirmed is it? Is it definite? Chair Powell is going to say, no, it's still going to be data dependent. We still need to gain more confidence with how inflation is going. But then the question is going to be like, if you're going to cut, is it going to cut by the same amount of 25 basis points or is it going to go by more? All right? So a lot of focus will be on September. Um, and that's why I don't think much is going to happen with the ADP non-farm tonight. Uh, we do have Canadian GDP as well. GDP for the Canadians looking to slow down month to month at, from a 0 0.3 to a 0 0.1. And then it's down to that. Tomorrow, we will have a whole bunch of new things to talk about because we have the BOE with their rate cut decision looking to go from a 5.25 to a 5%. So don't miss tomorrow's session as well, okay? It's taken me a whole good 20 minutes to go through all the news that has happened today, or is going to, has happened and is going to happen today. With all that in mind, let's look at the charts. What could happen with all that major news? And, you know, I was just telling the guys in the office today that I don't really, I didn't really want to do the session today because there's a news pending. Anything could happen with the news. But we'll do our best. We'll plan out the scenarios and see how it could play out, okay? So just remember that today is the um, 31st of July. There is an FOMC decision pending. Okay, so there is that level of, eh, things could happen, things could go totally crazy. Now, I updated this FIB retracement levels from the bottom down here all the way to the top up here near that resistance. I'm looking at this and I see the, oops, where am I going? Okay, I see the dollar index sitting right in the middle of that annoying um, range that it has been in since last week. Well, Friday the 19th of July, where it's more than last week, it's bounced in, stayed within this range, tested, came back in, stayed within, broke out slightly, but came back in again. And even before that, you see that even since 12th of July, it's just within that range. So it's back in, it's staying in this range now. Okay. What's likely to happen? I think that if the Fed Reserve comes out, right, I think that for now, we're going to see the dollar stay within these boundaries, right? And more likely, I think that we're going to see it sit there and test up before testing lower and staying in that range. No big surprises there. It's going to stay within the range, ranging, oops, 
ranging between 104.20 and 104.55. That's where it's going. Anticipating, anticipating some dovishness or some talk about a rate cut scenario from the Fed Reserve, we're likely to see the dollar weaken. Right? I'll show you this as well, is that on the 13th of June when they didn't do anything, there was no big surprises. <coughs> Where was it? On the 13th of June, right there. Okay, there. So 13th of June, uh, 2 a.m. <coughs> okay, this one. Right, so dollar push right down, found that 104.30 level. Um, they, the feds didn't say anything about a rate cut scenario, didn't give any hints about you know, possible rate cuts. We saw the dollar bounce off this 104.30 to push to the upside, right? Bounce right back up. It went from within the hour, 104.37 up to 104.70. So big push to the upside. Coming back to this point now is if the Fed Reserve does not support or does not say anything about a rate cut scenario in September, then we're going to see this push right up. Okay? And I think that it could even push right up to that 105.20 level. Okay, let me just move that chart a bit. There we go, okay. Right up to that 105.20 level. So that is if Fed makes no comment on rate cut. DXY could push up to 105.20. All right. There we go. Then, if they come around and go, yes, we haven't done anything on rates for July, but we're gaining more confidence, we're looking at September as a reasonable timeline to break, um, or to cut the, to do a first cut on interest rates, then I think that we could see the dollar index break down to that 103.65 level. I don't think we're going to see a massive, massive drop yet because I don't anticipate that he will say for sure we're going to cut. I think that he's likely to say that we're planning, you know, most likely in September we're looking to cut. Um, so there is still going to be a little bit of uncertainty. It's going to be data dependent. It's going to be waiting to get that more more data, more confidence. So I think that we could just see it come down to that 103.65 level. Okay. Does this make sense um, so far? Do put into the chat and let me know. Um, if Fed Dovish makes comment on rate cuts in no oh, cuts cuts in September, DXY could push down to one hundred three dot sixty five. Right, so unfortunately at this point here, it is a could go up, could go down scenario. I don't like to, to tell you about such a scenario, but we, we just don't know what they're going to say. So we're just covering on a rate, no rate cut. No comments on rate cut. We're going to see this push up. Comments on rate cut in September. We're going to be a little bit dovish for the dollar. We're going to see that push down. Make sense so far? Put it into the chat. Let me know if it makes sense before I move on. 
put it in. Let me know. Okay, as you are doing that, <coughs> one thing I'm noticing here, um, okay, before I tell you about that, I'll, I'll do this one first. Right, so Kiwi dollar, we were looking for it to test and push down. It didn't, in fact, it just continually pushed to the upside. So that trade wouldn't have triggered. Take that away. What you should be seeing here is the upside push on the Kiwi. Uh, we talked about this over the last couple of days, finding that support to bounce, the same thing as how it did here, and if we go to H4, how it did in April, and how it did in November last year, finding this 5860 support level to bounce off. Right, so the same thing here, we see it finding that support to push to the upside. Now at this point, I'm planning for this if we see big dollar weakness to come into play later tonight, then you're possibly going to see the Kiwi test and push back up. Okay, so what you'll be looking for would be about five nine three zero stop loss 20 pips take profit 50 pips to the upside okay test bounce off push back up that makes sense i like that five nine three zero twenty to fifty to the upside um, by zero point five nine three zero stop loss twenty take profit fifty to the upside this is dxy weakness we're going to be looking for that then on to the aussie we're done with all that, we can take that away. If that trend line is broken, take all that away. I'm pretty sure that's a faster way, but do it this way. What I would be looking for here, okay, would be, as it sits there, remember Aussie Dollar News came out this morning, I want to see it break this support. Dollar strength scenario, we'll be looking for it to break the support and push down. So weak Aussie, if we see a stronger dollar, it's going to have a big push. 6450, stop loss. 25 take profit you got an eight you get a 90 pip move to the downside down to this low um, that we saw on the 19th of april All right so it says i don't need it so big All right so it's just sitting in there right now i want to see it consolidate in this point Consolidate around here, push down dollar strength plus Aussie weakness, pushing it down 645025 to 90 to the downside. Six. 0 0.6490. Did I get that right? 6450. 6450, can I go a little bit higher? I wouldn't, no. 6450, 25 to 90, okay. 6450, stop loss, 25, take profit, 90. Again, this would be on DXY strength. Okay, so we're covering our setups to see what we can do in event of the news. 
then on to the US yen, you already know what I'm looking for here. I want to see it break. I want to see it break that 152 to the downside. It looks like it could happen earlier than before the news. It could be happening earlier than the news. So I'm looking at 151.50. One fifty one dot fifty stop loss. You're looking at about fifty pips again. Take profit. I'll be looking at two fifty to sixty to the downside. Right, there is going to be a little bit of a hesitation at about that point there. About no, about that point there, right in the middle. But we're looking for that to break. I don't want to put it too near because I don't want it to trigger and bounce right back. Okay, so in fact, you can't even, you should even be looking at a 70 pip stop loss on this. So size down because your stop loss is going to be a little bit wider. But we're looking for that to break. Firstly, break that 152 level to swing down to almost that 149 level. Okay, so if you look at 149, it would be about 245. Okay, so we're looking at 151.50, 70 to 250. Now we're looking for this. US yen, I'm looking to sell. 151.50, stop loss, 70, take profit. 245 to the downside. I think that because I think that it's going to happen a bit earlier than the news, I wouldn't say it's so much because of the dollar weakness, but we do need to see. You're not going to see it drop that much if the dollar is strengthening, right? So we do need to see that DX, DXY weakness plus what we just saw on the from the BOJ that's going to drive the US yen to the downside. Right, breaking below this point. What I have seen it test already. Let me just check something. Yeah, so we've seen it test. Come back up about 50, come right back down. So I like the the way it's moving. Break that support to the downside. Okay, I'm happy with that. Then pound dollar. This was something that I was looking at very closely before the session. Before this session today, I was sitting there and I was looking at the pound dollar as it started pushing back down and I thought, I want to sell this. Right, I want to sell this as how we had it set up, right? And that we can also see that it's crossing over to the downside. Um, but we do have that big news coming up. We do have the big news coming up on the um, dollar with the FOMC. So that's all working out well. But I feel that it might be a little bit early there. <clears throat> Looking at this, what I would be more tempted to do is if it breaks below, if it closes below that point. Again, this might be earlier than the news itself. You'll be looking to sell down 1.28. I don't like this round number here. That's the problem. I don't like that round number. Let me see. Um, this move makes sense. This, yes. Down to that 61.8. Yes. Okay. I think what you have here is that we want to see it push down to this point, to that 61.8 level. 
you could be looking to sell down but I don't think this is an H1 kind of setup right this might be an M15 kind of setup that you want to watch and monitor a bit closely because you have 1.28 right there as well so I could still see this come down but we're possibly better off looking for reaction here at 1.2780 Alright, so yeah, I want to see a reaction here at 1.2780. We'll put that there first. Alright, um, look for reaction at 1.2780. We'll update that with another setup after we look at the <coughs> after we look at the euro dollar right why i say that is because you can see that the euro dollar as much as we were talking about this yesterday with that speculative bounds and that continuation to the downside what is done is just set right there it's just set right there it came down, tested 1.08, went back up, tested, came back down 1.08, came back up, it's still stuck in that range. And that's the 50% retracement level. So what I will be looking for here would be if it does break down. All right, we we'll look for that selling opportunity on the Euro one point, below 1.08. We have a tight stop, no more than 20 pips. The take profit down to that 61 is very tight. Oops. Then I would like also to consider this point. Right there. Okay, we don't need that. Break, yes, down. 61 I can go all the way down to this point which I see here that's what I'm looking for below 1.08 20 to 55 to the downside right I like that one more so now on the euro we're looking to sell at 1.08 stop loss 20 tick profit 55 and that's if we see dxy um, strength now thinking about that dollar strength scenario that could push this down if we look at the pound uh, I still don't like to consider whether it's going to do that. Given that we're anticipating tomorrow rate decision from the UK with a rate cut, I think what you can be doing here would be Okay, let me think about that. Let me let me do this. All right, so we're looking at this point here. We're looking at this point here. We're looking at this point here. What I would be looking for in this case would be take all that away for now. I think a revision of this would be below 1.28. What I think is going to happen is it's going to come back down, bounce around and break. So you want to see it below 1.28, which is just about that point there. Break, there you go, 65, stop loss, 20. We look for that. I like that okay good so 1.28 20 to 65 to the downside also remembering that we have 
Yeah, we're also remembering that we have the BOE tomorrow. So we're looking to sell at 1.28, stop loss 20, take profit 65. Very similar to the Euro at the round number levels. Um, this is DXY strength and also BOE decision tomorrow. Right, so this could be a biggish kind of trade to the downside even through to tomorrow. Then US Swiss franc, I don't I don't even like it on usual days. Right now it's sitting right in the middle. Looking at this as it pushes down. We have that downside. Hey, Jamil. My day is that the day just started. We have the FOMC coming out tonight. The day is not that well. I don't think the day should be done. A lot more news to be had for today. Right, um, so that's a resistance. But I know what you mean. I mean, I could have closed off my day as well, but I just, I just like, I just can't, I just, yeah, I can't forego the news that we've been waiting for for so long. Okay, um, that test at 61. Bounce back up. I want to see it test, reject. I would like to see it test and reject this resistance. So do that and push right back down. Given we see that dollar weakness come into play, 8820, stop loss 20, take profit 70 to the downside. Down to that support, yes, okay. Test and reject resistance 8820 to 70 to the downside. Now let's look at that. <coughs> we're going to sell at 0 0.8820, stop loss 20, take profit 70 on DXY weakness. Okay, we see that already pushing down slightly. Then onto the US CAD on the Looney. Remember, 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 we have CAD. <coughs> oh man, voice is going. We have. <coughs> Right, we have CAD GDP to be released. Looks like it's going to be weak. It's going to play in a whole mess with the way the Fed funds rate together with all the news would come in. I think CAD is sitting right there. Now looking at this. I think it's going to sit along this support area, all right? It's going to sit along this point. Trend line doesn't really make sense anymore. We can do that. Yep, we can do that because we catch this point. There's two points here, so that makes still makes sense. Sitting around here. If the US CAD stays below 1.3860, we could see it push back down. <coughs> so what we're looking at is probably, it's gonna sit there, it's gonna push back up a little bit, but I'm looking for it to turn down. Um, Haider just said, ooh, you guys can. Oh, it's moving. Okay, we're going to end soon. I want to trade. Um, <coughs> what was I going to say? Uh, Haider just said shorted at 1.386. 
1.386. Oh yeah, that's nice, that's good. Yeah, so I was gonna say, it needs to stay below 1.3860 to push down. I think there is a little bit more, there's a little bit of an upside before coming back down. Um, no. No, 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 no. I think it's gonna consolidate. Actually, Hyder, be careful of this. I think it's gonna consolidate. Dollar, if we see the dollar not move too much and we see some weakness on the CAD, we could be looking at 1.3850, stop loss 20, take profit 45 to the upside. I'll look for that. Consolidate and push up. This is going to be looking like a buy at 1. 1.3850, 1. 20 to 45. 1.3850, stop loss 20, take profit 45. Um, Maron, yeah, I just changed it. Um, I was thinking of whether the dollar weakness could push it back down just looking at the way the CAD doesn't like this level right April reverse from here um, before that it reversed in this area as well and before that this area as well so maybe one more push up before it comes back within the range right it's been stuck in this top since october 22 right since october 22 it's hit this level and turned back down so not saying that it can't break this level but i possibly would think that it's gonna do maybe that test and then after that do that <coughs> okay there we have it i hope i answered your question there um, maron dollar is pushing down a bit strongly right now and that's why we're seeing the us yen push down i want to get into that I think that that could be a move. It might bounce a little bit. Let me see. Yeah, it could come back up a little bit before coming lower. But that's a trade I want to get into. So let's finish this up with gold. Then I can get back to my trades. Um, gold found the support bounced off as we were talking consolidate along 2390 with upside to 2400 it pushed up to 2400 and beyond it went to 2418 at this point here dollar is pushing down so that's going to push up that's done already Take all of that away. We don't need that. And that's done. Okay. So what I'm looking at here as it pushes up, it needs to break 24.20. So it's consolidating along this level. Needs to break and push up towards that resistance. I'll say above 24. 25 that was that point there we could see it get up to 2450 all right so gold um, needs to break 20 2425 to trade up to 2450 and that's on continued dollar weakness all righty now with all that said focus is back to the yen as it continues to push to the downside no could extend gains after boj leverage we already know that 
weak yen was not necessarily the biggest reason for a rate hike, that's fine. Right, so looking at this, I'm still thinking that it could, in the next couple of minutes, retrace slightly before pushing back down again or sit around that level before pushing down. Still looking for that push to the downside. If you haven't already, do help me out. Click that like and subscribe button. Check out the yen video that I did. Um, stay on as I trade live together with you guys on the stream, just without my face and my voice. Voice is going. Um, and please remember FOMC, a lot of news coming up please trade well trade safe take care now